So we. Is it a preferred tool to view the SAM file? Is it what? Is it a preferred tool, or is it only tool? Is there any other tool to view the SAM file? Like SAM to BAM? No. SAM tools is the only one that does the SAM to BAM and sort of some of these conversions. Okay. Um, yeah, there was. There are other tools that go and manipulate the SAM file to get you different outputs. Okay. But like bed tools can take a BAM file or PCART tools will take another file. But in terms of just uh, the actual SAM to BAM conversion, okay. that's I think SAM tools is the only one. Or maybe there are others and then we only use SAM tools for a while so nobody's heard of them. Okay. Um, Alright, so first step. Log into Airs1 with your user IDs. If you're already there, ignore this step. And then we go to CD, Data, MGHCC, Bioinformatics class. Is everybody there? Yeah. Oh, yes. Okay. We'll wait. So the aim for today's practical is to go work through uh, the file that we had in class on Monday, which is this one, the Bioinformatics Lecture SAM Tools Analysis. Uh, you, this file is also available on uh, the the course website. Does anybody take? Did anybody take a look at that? So if you go to intro to bioinformatics.com, log in. I may already be logged in. That's oh, really interesting. So. If you go into the bioinformatics.com and then log in. So here in the course, if you see course details, under course details you will have post alignment SAM tool section where I have posted the video as well as the homework and information which was basically go over this session and, and the practical file for this session which is over here to download. So this is under, you know, Intro to Bioinformatics. If you go under Units, you see, do you see where I am? No. I'm trying to catch up. Okay. So log in, and then in your menu, if you go into the say courses or dashboard, dashboard. If you go to dashboard, and then you just scroll down. So you go to dashboard, yep. and then you go scroll down. And then under details, there's this thing called course details. Yep. You click that, and then you come to this page where you know you see this goofy video thing. And then if you keep scrolling down, that's where you start getting the details for all the lectures. Has anybody been going here? No. I have, but honestly, yeah. it's a little hard to hard navigate to, find. to and find okay. things. I'll create a menu link just for this page and put it up top. Okay. Right? That would be better. You might better. also want to write that in orange, these are not just videos but the PowerPoints. It took me a while to find the PowerPoints because I saw this and saw the times and thought it was just the videos. But you, with, if you click on it, it oh. takes you the link to the videos and PowerPoint. I see. I see. Got it. Okay. All right. Maybe it would be a better place to put the time for the video here. And post it there. Okay, all right. So moving on. So if you go and if you've already downloaded this file, then you're good. You know, under SAM tools, basically this wait, one. Wait, wait, wait. What's that? What's that? What's so if you go to SAM tools, the last one, post alignment SAM tools, okay, this okay, one. Okay, okay, okay. And then you just download the file at the bottom of the page. It says practical file for this session right here. SAM tools analysis. Yeah, SAM tools analysis. Now it's a TXT, which is fine, you know, then you can open that file under Text Wrangler and you get this file. Alright? Okay? Alright, so, actually I'm going to just do that and download this file to make things easier. And then, show in Finder, and open with Text Wrangler. Open this with Text Wrangler. Okay, perfect. Now, so, till where was everybody able to get through in this file? Except the BCF tool. 
Okay. So let's start with uh, Raj. I was sent to Ben. Okay. All right. So you were able to simulate the reads and all that part? Yes. But, okay. WG sim, no problem. Copying indexes? Yes. Okay. So converting SAM to BAM. This is where you are. I, that, I think I may have just done that actually. Sorry. Yep. So is that, it, it, was everybody able to do SAM to BAM conversion? No. I mean, don't mind. I'm behind. Okay, so where are you, Linda? We'll start from there. Because I forgot my computer last time, so I was just watching Mark do it last time. Okay, so you want to do it all on your own? Yeah. Okay, got it. So, would you want me to walk you through it, or would you want to do it yourself? Uh, I, I don't want to take away from what everyone else is doing. Oh, all right. Whatever's helpful it's to you. So yeah. Go over it. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> sure? yeah it's fine. Anything is fine with us. Right, right. It's quite wrong, like, if you will come in. So the first thing you want to do is just you know get get used to module load you know once you are in your directory so right now we're in MGHCC bioinformatics class and then we go over to our directory I'm going to go over to mine you can go over to yours so PWD shows we're in my directory right now and then we can go to um, uh, wait, this was under this was under alliance no. What was the folder? We make a tutorials folder? No, wait, uh, yeah, tutorials, right? Okay. Right. Tutorials. So under this, you have, uh, you can, you have multiple folders, including genomes, indexes, variants, simulated reads, and alignments, right? So if you have created these folders, then great. Otherwise, you'll do mkdir for, uh, let's see, what folders do we need to create? Well, definitely, we don't need to create, I mean, technically, you can create the genomes folder and copy uh, these files, the genome files, into your directory, or you can reference them from my directory. Okay. The reason why we need these is because um, we're trying to simulate our test reads from this genome. So uh, this is the so this is the E. coli genome and WGSIM will generate simulated reads across the genome. Uh, for the sake of the tutorial we simulated read for the first thousand bases of the genome. And so for to do that we extract the first one thousand bases of the E. coli genome and this places in this file. And this file is under this directory genomes. Okay? Uh, this one, nc, this underscore 1k.fna. Alright? But we also have this entire genome as well as their FAI, which is the index file. Okay. okay. Mm. So now wgsim is the command here, which is saying minus n1000 using the first thousand bases. Uh, use this genome that's specified here to create this uh, FASTQ file and give the output to dev slash null. Okay. okay, so this is our command which right now will work or not work? You need to be on the cluster, you're on the, you're on the... Right, on the login node. These yeah. are small files, we'll just work on the login node. Are you allowed to do that? Is John We're allowed Jackson to do that okay if you're. Huh? <laughs> so, did John Jackson okay with that? John, I think you'll be okay. These are very, very small uh, data sets. So, if you see, like, the. Uh, if you see the LS. These are. You're talking, you know, 4.8 MB and kilobases here. Okay. You're not talking GBs, so. MBs is fine. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, that said, the reason why it will not work is because. To module load. Yes. Mm -hmm. So first thing we do is we module load. Where where will we find WGSIM? Uh, hold on. Right there right now. Think, think, think. Don't look. Think. <laughs> Don't look. No searching. Think. Where do we find WGSIM? What what are we covering Bowtie? today? Bow tie. <laughs> Good. At least at least you tried. <laughs> full full points for attempt. <laughs> All right, so it's under SAM tools. Oh, SAM thing. Oh, I was trying to search. The, the <laughs> practicals that we're going to be doing. 
Now for SAM tools we have multiple versions. We're going to be using 0 0.1.1 uh, each. Huh? Isn't it each? Well, this is 1.18. That was the one that was, I think the H1 was something else. Oh, okay. That was something else. Okay. I think it was Starliner. Oh, uh, okay. Alright, so now let's try to do WG Sim and it works. So basically, the same author, Hengli, wrote SAM tools as well as the, uh, the simulator. Um, and then we're gonna end up using this format and it'll work as long as you're in the correct directory. So we're just gonna do this and boom. So it simulated that thing and now if we go under uh, CD simulated reads and do ls minus ltrh we find our new simulated file which was just created at 1421 on March 31st. All right? Is everybody with me? Yep. Perfect. Now, next step we're going to do is we'll load Bowtie. Okay? So, Bowtie 2, we'll load this because we want to align. So, we're going to load it here. We're using Bowtie 2 as the aligner. Okay. All right. Now, so next step is the indexes. So, Bowtie cannot run without the index. Now, yes, you have a question. I was just thinking of if in a normal workflow, this is where you would be starting once the sequencer has generated your reads, right? This would be step one. Yes, this, this would be step one okay. when you already have your reads. Okay, got it. The fast yep. QC is first. Right? Well, right. Technically, you do the fast QC. Oh, that you... was involved in the step prior. Oh, okay, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Sorry. good point. Yep. Go, go, let's go over the steps once again. Uh, what happens first once you get your sequencer, the data from the sequencer? Check the quality of Check the quality of the... Then, then what? Depending on your analysis, Align it to your either whole genome or, okay. or transcriptome or whatever ohm you know mm -hmm. that you prefer. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So once you have aligned it, what do you use for alignment? We could use and there are okay. So there are aligners, mm -hmm. and then supposing what happens in the in let's say in an exceptional case where you don't have a reference genome, then what do you do? If you don't have a reference genome? Yes. Genome? I mean, it's not going to be a problem that you'll ever face, but as, just as a question, <laughs> <laughs> what would you do if you don't have a reference genome? So, normally, in that case, what you do is you assemble a reference genome using an assembler. So that's called de novo assembly. Mm -hmm. So, in that case, you could use that, whatever data you've sequenced, to assemble a reference genome and then align samples to either that same assembled genome. Or you could also, you know, sequence more samples until you are sure that you have a consensus reference sequence and then go back and align. So, what's the tool that you use to do de novo uh, alignment? So, there are aligners that are there, that, uh, assemblers that Assembler. are there, that are there for de novo assembly. Uh, Velvet was a very popular one a few years ago that they used, um, and then um, I, me, and my some group of, of people in my previous uh, position, we wrote an assembler as well, which I don't think anybody used. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, how it works. <laughs> you know but uh, well, I mean, you know, it was it was a pretty theoretical paper, honestly. But never mind. Uh, it was more for the fun of it and then I think rather people using it. Uh, anyways, Velvet is a good assembler. That said, uh, once you have a reference genome, then moving on, we, uh, we use an aligner. What are the multiple aligner options? There are a lot of them. Top hat or star. Star, top hat, bow tie, uh, BWA, Novo Align, Eland. These are all aligners. So they align your sequence to the reference genome. Oh, bow tie is also an aligner? Yes. So we align these. So right now we're going to align this using bow tie. But what do we need to align for most aligners? A reference. And a reference and an index of the reference genome. What's it, what would be the in, what would index it? It's the... Huh? Reference genome. Index for the reference genome, oh. which is basically a fast lookup for your 
uh, for the to speed up the alignment process. Uh -huh. Okay. All right. So in this case, let's go and make the index directory, and we go into the index directory indexes. We already have the indexes here, so if you see here, you have the indexes directory, and then in that directory, I have created these indexes for you for the bowtie to E. coli genome. Okay, so you can either copy them into your directory or by creating a local directory. Um, now, you could also ask me what would you do if you didn't have these indexes, right? You have to create them. You have to create them. So how do we do that? So in order to do that, there is this, this is the help for bow tie. So you can create the index using uh, one of these options for creating index. This is the alignment, reporting, effort, paired in, output. So Bowtie 2 has a command in there where you can, I forget which one it is. Here, let's ask Google. <laughs> Bowtie 2 create index. Whenever in doubt, ask Bowtie or uh, ask that. So the good thing is, for most of the genomes, they have their indexes listed right here. You see this section on the Bowtie website? Mm. You can just click on this and download. Like they have Homo sapiens, they also have UCSC, HG 18, 19, 38, so NCBI. Are those all different people? They're, no, they're different uh, versions mm. of consensus hu human sequence. So how do you know which one to use? Uh, there are versions at different time points. So 18 came out first. So it was around, I think, in early 2000s. And then uh, at some point, uh, they came up with HG19 when they found more, you know. They're... So in principle, you should use the most recent one. That's you should use the most, the yes. Indexes, so right? yes. So I use this GRCH38, which is the latest one from NCBI. That's the one I use. Okay. Uh, especially if you're in the process of discovery, if you want to discover new things, then definitely use the latest one because that way you have the most recent annotations and you have everything there. Okay, uh, you can download it from here straight away. So same for mouse, MM10 is more recent than MM9. Okay. And these are only for the Bowtie Aligner. This is for the Bowtie Aligner, Bowtie. So it's because it's on the Bowtie 2's website. For Top Hat, you have similar downloads. I see. But you can also create them. You can also create them. So using a command. So. Each aligner needs their own index. Bowtie build. Bowtie 2 build is a command. Okay. okay, so command line arguments are here. Bowtie 2 dash build. Options reference dot in and bowtie 2 dot base. Uh, so underscore base, which means here you just specify whatever reference genome file, the faster file. And then this is just the name, the base name of your thing that you want to call it. Like, if I want to call it, you know, whatever, human genome bowtie to index, then it'll create that dot bt2, that dot bt2 one, like here. Here the, ba um, uh, so here the base name is E. coli, and then it just creates this dot 2 dot bt2, dot 3 dot bt2, dot rev dot 1, all those things, okay? This is the base name here. The reference genome would be the FASTA file for the for the genome, which is under genomes. Right here. So this will be your reference genome file, FNA. You see this? Mm. Mm -hmm. That's your reference file that goes here. Why is that an FNA file, not like a... It's still a FASTA file. It's just a way to say it. It's just it's just a different name that if you ever confused just go and look it up like so it's exactly a fast fit format file right so the first line is your line and then the rest is the sequence okay okay um, okay so are we clear now how to build the so so far we've learned you know alignment oh, sorry before alignment the quality control, everything, your files are ready, now you want to align, so you choose the aligner, then you build the index for that aligner, 
how you build that index for the aligner is like this, using this command. And once you are uh, building that, then uh, you know this will run, and you will get output like this in your indexes directory. So why are there so many index files? Why isn't it just one giant file? It's just the format they have. I mean, the program, the aligner, will have a format of what files it needs and what information it keeps in those files. So, but it'll always generate these number of files. Which are four, four files? Well, actually, one, two, three, four, rev, five, and six. What are the revs? Honestly, these are binary files. I haven't opened them. Does it just do that just for computational purposes? It breaks it up into... Yeah. smaller jobs. Uh, that's my thing. See, it's a binary file. Uh, so I can't open it and see, but that's my assumption is that it just likes to split it up for whatever reason. Okay. Either way, that's a good question, but you won't be able to do anything without... Regardless, the, when you're doing the aligning, you need all of the indexes. You need all of these indexes. Okay. But with one command, like this command, you can create the indexes, so it's not a big deal. Okay. Whatever new okay. genome you have, just create their indexes and you're good to go. Okay? All right. Now who wants cookies? <laughs> Is it cookie hour? Oh we'll my god. We'll take okay. a two minute break, get some cookies, right. and come right back. I'm going to try to catch up. Get some coffee. You know, I opened up that SAM tool now. They are. They are a very, very confusing branch of computer science, which is there for a reason, though. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, it's there to speed up stuff, and it's actually very helpful for, you wow. know, Especially for search engines, search engines like Google, mm -hmm. the entire Google economy started with just hash maps and just the simple algorithm of how to make search faster. Wow! So hmm. indexes were the basis of Google. Wow! So, <laughs> so what you're studying here no, is that's that every powerful th stuff. Yeah, I mean, if there were no indexes or somebody hadn't discovered the fast lookup thing, then there would be no Google. That, that was their algorithm, the first paper that they published in 1999 or something like that mm -hmm. in Stanford. That was, this paper was exactly about how to do a fast lookup, wow. the original Google paper. Wow. And that's basically spread out into, you know, the whole indexing the web. So the, they have an index of the entire internet. That's what Google is. And then on top of that, they've built an index for everyone's personal, you know, history everything you've referenced, everything you've been to, every search you've made, it's all indexed and stored in Google. Oh my gosh, that's scary. Well, <laughs> but yeah, scary, but at the same time, you know, think about how how efficiently their servers run and that basically you just start typing. Like, just the fact that you can go to Google and uh, start typing bow tie, and it already gives you, this is from your history, and then these are the other links. All of this is just coming from indexes that they've created. And so they have these huge files, but yeah. they don't need to load the whole file. No. They'll only look at like line by line. Yeah, well, that's why or if like you start typing Bo, you know, Bo more, it'll go to the scotch, whereas if you type Bo tie, it'll go to the index, right? Yeah, I, I mistyped Python last night, and Peyton Manning showed up. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. So anyways, it's very interesting. It's a whole different science behind all this. Okay, moving on. Uh, I actually have a dumb question. Yeah, Because sure. there are so many aligners, right? So how could we choose which one to use? Uh, yeah, so you go to Google and, oh, sorry, and then you type which is the best alignment algorithm. And, and it's it, all based on, like, the quality scores and, like, how it defines what's in and out, right? As, like, when should I choose top hat? When should I choose bow tie? Uh, List of sequence alignment software. What's the best read aligner for which kind of data? Is top hat the only ma mapper? So these are all interesting questions. Like you know, if you just Google them, there's a lot of stuff to. It's a best spliced aligner to the human genome. You see, if you're doing spliced aligner, that's different versus if you're using some other sort of thing. Like okay, so BWA SOAP is an aligner, MAC is an aligner, uh, <laughs> BLAT OMG alignment methods. <laughs> but but you know, there's a lot of data, and people have done studies. People have done studies based on their papers on this, too. If you go and search under Google Scholar... And it's also based on the instrumentation, right? And what that proprietary, yes. like, quality scores can spit yes. out, right? Yes, exactly. So you can say, what is the best aligner for RNA-seq? Right? So, is top hat... Okay, so this is the first one. 
right? And then somebody would have answered it, you know, there's BWA, why is that not aware of splicing, mm -hmm. you know? Um, in addition to Dropify, there are natives of functions like Soap Splice, Star, G Snap, or there are more. Some are claimed to be better than Drop Hat, but I don't really know what is best. So this is basically, you know, a back and forth, and then you run it on your data, and that's the only way you find out whether it works or not for your data set the way it has. And as and as and when they come up with new versions, the developers of these programs, they add to their software as well, right? So they keep coming up with new versions which are better than the previous one. But they shouldn't be that divergent from one another, right? For basic standard stuff. They should all be giving you the same thing. Technically, in, the, in an ideal world. <laughs> yeah, that just makes me feel so. <laughs> okay, yeah. so once we've copied that, we make the alignment directory and then we just run the bowtie 2. We specify a C, notice here, we didn't say .bt2 or anything over here with the E. coli. We didn't write .bt2. Could you though? No. No, okay. <laughs> it will fail because it, it needs all of them, not the one BT2 file. Oh, right, right, right. If you could just do star, right? Well, actually, we just do the base the name, prefix. Okay. the prefix that we picked. Okay. And then we specify what are the fast queue reads okay. that we need, and then we specify the SAM file uh, at, that we want as the output, and then it creates that for us. Okay? Mm -hmm. So everybody was able to run through here. And then next we come to SAM tools for after we have the alignments. So, so first thing, let's see, you know, here we gave the output as .sam, right? Mm -hmm. So that would be what would be created. So if we go to alignments, do an ls. So we see what files were created, what do we have, okay. So we have this file, our SAM file, and then the next step is for us to go and convert SAM to BAM. All right? Right? Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Can anybody tell me why we need to do that? Faster. Smaller file. That's true. That is probably one of the only reasons, and then of course sometimes you need some, some, some of these programs accept only BAM files. Okay. So then, what is the command that we use? What is the command that we use? Uh, we use this command called, exactly, we call SAM tools view command, all right? The view command has, uh, So the SAM tools view command has multiple uh, further options. So if you go through the options, you know, the most common is minus B, which says, you know, just output a BAM file. So notice the input could be what? Input is either BAM or SAM. So when you see this pipe, it means OR. So it's either BAM or SAM. Does that make sense? So it's more about what do you want as output. So if you want as output as BAM, then what do you put the flag as here? Minus B. Can you um, do some very basic, like, so these these in, greater than less than signs are what you're inputting in. Yes. And then the, the pipe signal up, or sign on this means OR. Right. And then for the uh, uh, square brackets. Right, so actually there are two kinds of syntax here. So you, you bring, a, bring up a good point, Linda. Basically, there's the usage, and then there's the actual command. So some symbols are common in the usage. For example, when you're trying to explain something to other Linux users or other users, you use this thing where you first type usage, colon, and then space, and then this is the first command name. This is a subcommand of that. And then anything in brackets is your other syntax for that command. So for example, when you say options, that just means there could be multiple values that go here, mm -hmm. right? It also means that it's not like uh, one particular format, but the options are detailed down here. So these are the only available and allowed options for mm -hmm. this command, okay? And the then, brackets get omitted, right? It's always just... Well, uh, normally it'll be a combination of one of these, like so it'll be minus B space something, minus H something, 
but it could be one or many. Right, but no, no brackets. No brackets. But no brackets. Anything inside the brackets is over here is just to tell you that this is what is, uh, you know, uh, this won't be in the actual format of the command, but it's the possibilities. Okay. It's to enumerate the possibilities. Followed by, then once you have multiple options, notice that there's always a space or some, of some sort between the options and then the actual input or that you have to put. Spaces are very important. So if you're not familiar, then now anything in these less than brackets or greater than brackets is just another way of saying that, okay, this is different from the options and it's an input or an output. Right, so the options have a very particular format, it's and like lower dash, lowercase, or yes. uppercase. It looks really yes. uppercase. Followed by also this space file. So like oh, if yeah. this option is minus L space file, uh -huh. then the output alignments overlapping the input bed file. Output alignments overlapping the input bed file, which means that it expects this file, it should be a bed file. And so then it'll output the alignments that are overlapping oh, this input bed file. Does that mean file. you have to type file or be No, you have to actually input the name of the file. The, okay, okay. Okay? Same thing for the in.bam. It doesn't mean that you have the file name should be in.bam. It just means that whatever input bam file is there. Or it could be input.sam. Mm -hmm. And this pipe means or, but in the actual command, you will not have this pipe or these greater than, less than signs. Mm -hmm. Okay? And you could also do this entire command for a region. So you could just say chromosome 1 from one uh, base pair one to one thousand is all that I care about, and you can put that in this, in front of this. And does the ellipsis mean that you can do multiple regions just separated yeah. by a comma? Yeah. Okay. I mean, I don't know. I've never done this, but it definitely means that there is a possibility of having more regions. Okay. Whether it's comma or space, most likely it could be space. Okay. Because otherwise, it would be a comma here. I don't get it because if it transforms from uh, SAM to BAM, it will basically compress the file. And if you add the region inside, you're going to compress part Just of that it? region. Wow. And then it's a combination of SAM and BAM file. Right? Because so only part of the SAM file will be converted to the BAM file. Yeah. yeah so you'll only get one output, but the region that you will get is the one that you specified. As a BAM file. Yes, okay. as whatever output you want. So if you don't. Oh, okay. So this is the input. The output, if minus B is output BAM, minus H is just to print the header for the SAM output, minus capital H, the header only with no alignments, and then minus capital S is input is SAM, and definitely SAM, it's not BAM, and minus U is the uncompressed BAM output. Uh, I mean, basically there are multiple outputs, you know. Can you, if you wanted to do multiple ones, instead of saying minus B space, space minus H, you can put minus B H, right? Do you have to put the I, dash? I, mean, I think you like have to put minus list. B space minus H. Oh, really? Okay. So it's different from the Linux when you do, like, list. Let's try it. So, some tools, view, minus B, H. Uh, what is the output here? And of BAM. Okay, so control. Did it actually work? Then what's H? Print the header? Uh, yeah. I think it may have worked. So. Okay, that makes sense. Okay. Because right. you always do lists, and I, always, I notice you always do it minus LTRH. Yeah. Instead of doing minus L, minus T, minus R, minus H. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we we went through samples view. You get a picture of how you run it. Okay. All right. Yeah. So here we say minus BAM is the output, minus S is the input, meaning SAM file is is, is the, going to be the input, and that's what you specify here. Minus O, you say that this is the output file that we want as a BAM file. Okay. And the output file always has to follow, follow the minus O, immediately yes. follow. Yes, yes. Okay, so then this is another one example of SAM tools view. We'll display your reads in a Unix, more paginated, paginated style, and then SAM tools view minus F4, just another way to extract the only those read which match the specified SAM flag. All right, so minus F is an option that you can specify which, um, which reads that fail to map to the reference genome. So this is an important one. There are these something called as SAM flags. 
so which you can use with the minus F option uh, which these ones you can just Google and it'll show you here okay so let's say Ah, so minus F4, it means unmapped. Right? The other thing is you can also do the other way around. So you can select, supposing you want to select the read that is paired and read unmapped. So that is 5. Okay? So paired, unmapped, and reverse strand. That's 21. Okay? So if you, instead of having minus F4, if you have minus F21, that's what you'll get. And then this capital F removes read which match the specified sand flag. Right, so this you can get from this broad website. You can just Google, you know, sand flags and it takes you here. So let's say you want to read paired, read unmapped, read reverse strand, and read first in pair. So that's the flag of 85. Alright? Does that make sense? You can just do minus F with this number, 85, and this is what it will mean. That means that the read is paired, the read is unmapped, the read is reverse on the reverse strand, and it's the first in the pair. It will just give you those reads. So, for example, I mean, you could be looking for read that is not a primary alignment. So it's a secondary alignment. So see? or that read is a PCR du duplicate. So just if you want to just do the PCR duplicates, you can just go 1024. And then if you want to remove the PCR duplicates, you could just do minus capital F 1024. Hmm. Does that make sense? You, you do minus F 1024 for yeah. the first one, right? Okay, yeah. yeah. Minus F 1024 instead of, and then give the name of the BAM file and then output that to a new BAM file and then you have your new BAM file that does not contain any PCR duplicates. Do you see how that's really powerful? It's like the police scanners when they say, yeah, 10 instead four. of saying a ten breaking four. and entering, they call it like, we have a 211 Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we have a 1024, we're removing all the duplicates it's here. Just, it's just an economy <laughs> of words. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. All right? Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everybody with me? Okay. And you process the pen file will still say as the same name here, like you remove to the minus Yeah, file. you can then output it. You'll have to put the greater than sign and output it to a new file, or you can just put the output file name minus O, whatever you want. So like, see, that's why you have the, you pipe it, you pipe this to more because it's going to put it on the console. But it's not going to save it. it no, no, unless, unless you put a greater than sign or, oh, or you put minus O specifically. So here is just to view it on the screen. Yeah, this is just to view. Okay. Right? Okay. Moving on. Uh, there, are, These are other examples of view, and then you can use the minus Q parameter to indicate the quality mapping filter. So if you want only the reads with 42 quality, that have map with quality of 42 or higher, that, that that's another filter you can do. Do you see why that's important? Mm -hmm. Is 42 like a particular number of people use or is I thought 30 that, was yeah so if you wanted 42 is the highest quality right or something on that Fred scale the 42 is 42 is like uh, okay so based on that you can specify it was a 42 or 45 that's the highest quality I think oh, I yeah <laughs> the point is 42 is pretty high right so let's just say you want to make a cutoff at 30 for yeah. example right 30 is the lowest I think 30 to 42 or 30 to 45 is the scale so you, you specify your cutoff as saying, like, I want only the ones over 40. So then you can just say, okay, 40 or higher, this number is 40, all right? And that way you only get the file with just those reads. Make sense? All right, so then the next step is to sort your SAM file, and then that command is sample sort. Uh, before you f f uh, call the genomic variants, we sort this. And the way we do that is using this command, sort to sort BAM file, and then the output file is the prefix of the output file. Notice we don't say .bam or .sam, we just give the prefix 
of the file, and then it automatically adds the map file. So, so we can just copy exactly as that is yes. written there. As long as you're in that directory, tutorial. Tutorial directory, right? Okay. Does it run for you? Uh, I don't know. I haven't run it. I'm just listening. Okay. <laughs> I can't do both. <laughs> okay. That's true. That's hard. Okay, and then once you have your BAM file sorted, you want to index that BAM file. Okay? The reason you want to index is that this enables tools, including SAM tools itself, to perform efficient random access on the BAM file, res resulting in improved performance. To do so, run, boom, SAM tools index file name, and that's it. And it'll generate the dot index file for that. So. And you should be under tutorials still for that, right? Well, right. If you are, uh, like, let's say, you could also run just simply here, SAM tools, index, uh, sim align reads dot sorted dot bam. As long as you are in the directory, you don't need to, you know. You're in the alignments though right now. All uh, right. That's why I'm doing just the file name. If I was not in alignments, then I would do cd dot dot pwd. Here I would do sam tools index alignments slash okay or sorted dot bam. That makes sense. Okay. okay. So what does the output file look like after you index it? Why don't you open it and see? Mm -hmm. Is it an assignment? <laughs> huh? You'll get the monkey faces. Yeah. <laughs> it's a binary file. Uh, is it with a BAI? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. That's oh, okay. That's what you want to know. The extension. Yeah. Yeah, because I get confused. What do you, what file does it create? It can, right. creates a BAI file. I see. Okay? Yes. All right. Moving on. In, in the sorted, could you tell me what that means again when it... Does that, that's putting into chromosome locations or? Right, so yes. And uh, the best way to understand anything is to go and go SAM tools, sort, and press enter or press, yeah, press enter. So it gives you SAM tools, sort, minus O, N are the options, minus M is the maximum memory, input dot BAM and output dot prefix. Now you could also do minus minus help. Minus H. Uh, I don't know. I think I tried this the other day and I right. yeah, I was running the same thing. I think you just Googled it. No, you just go Sam Tools. Okay. <laughs> So if you go SAM tools sort though it doesn't have much help here. It still says just sort alignment file, it doesn't say how it's how it sorts it, right, right. So I think the, then you just Google it. If you're ever stuck like that, you just go to Google, go SAM tools sort. Okay, so you get to go to SAM tools sort and then it brings you to let's say we go to the first manual page that comes up. Uh, this is our sort command. And this this is right here on this page is not GPU sort okay so um, alignments by leftmost coordinates or by read name those are the two options that we have to sort them okay so you can use by read name when minus n is used or otherwise it sorts them by coordinate by default right so what is the coordinates is that Closest to the pre-prime end? Uh, the coordinate is the actual alignment position at which the read align. So that would be the coordinate being like chromosome 1 comes before chromosome 2, then 3, like that. Okay. Okay. Coordinate 1 before coordinate 2, like that. Okay? Alright, so that's uh, about sorting, you know. You can specify the output file rather than the standard output. You can specify whether you want a SAM or BAM as output in any of these. Uh, is there any question about this? You know, just going back to like the higher view, like our original file, like what is this whole exercise? We have E. coli, RNA, DNA, like what are we looking at? 
Well, we simulated short reads. Short reads. 70 base pair reads. In this case, we're just finding genomic variants. Okay. Uh, we we so put a, DNA reads. Yes. It. Okay. And we put a variant in location something. Okay. And then we're just kind of lining down. We want to find that variant. That's our goal. Okay. But the whole, in order to do that... What do you mean by variant? There's two different kinds of E. coli and we want to know like... Oh no, this is basically means that actually E. coli is single-stranded, so it doesn't have, a, it's not a deployed, right? Okay. So, um, what we have is this uh, SNP that we have introduced in position 476, I think. Okay. Uh, so, this particular E. coli genome has, instead of a G, it has a T, or something like that, in that location. Okay. So now we have to identify that okay. from the actual sample. And these reads are like simulated in the Illumina sequencer kind of read? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Right. Cool. cool. Okay. So moving back to Text Wrangler, then we go and do the mpile up command. So this is the command that actually goes and then helps you create this variant file the BCF file, right? Did, uh, did the rest of you try it? Apart from, I know Linda didn't get a chance to yet, so did everybody else try it? I'm up to that stuff now, okay. but I haven't tried it. Yeah. That can be, uh, that can be in tutorial, right? Yes. Okay. So let's run that. Notice the format of the command. You have the mpilot. You have the minus G, minus F options, and you specify the genomes. You specify the input BAM file. And then the output is directed to the where variance BCF file. The BCF is a format. And you don't need to module load BCF yet, right? It's only if you want to like look at it. Yeah. Well, mpile up is part of the sound tools suite. Okay. Okay. All right. So let's open the let's go less variance slash semvariance.bcf I got a no such file or directory Oh, it didn't run? It didn't run I did it in tutorials Okay, was the command this one? Sem tools m Yeah, I mean I copied and pasted it so, I, so far it looks like What does it say? It says minus bash colon Variance slash sim variance BCF no such file directory. Is variance a folder exist? I don't know that I ever made one of those. Where, where would that folder? So if you go here, ls in tutorial. Do you see this variance directory? Uh huh. So then make that then. That's the reason. Just make directory variance. Mkdir variance. If you don't have this directory, make that. Okay. Now try running it. So when it says that something didn't align to the genome, I mean the part when they're saying that 34 didn't align, does that mean that bow tie just couldn't align it? Yeah. And mm -hmm. so like, do they have a score that they decide like it's not alignment? Because they could like say everything is mismatch. It's like they have some arbitrary. No, you can change those parameters. You can change those parameters. You go into both trial. Okay. You can see like how many mismatches. Okay. Whether you want the mismatches, where do you want them, all that stuff. Can you remind us what versions of everything we're supposed to be using? Um. In top hat, bow tie, and sam tools, and star. I just well, want to make sure I'm right here. I'm, I'm going to start from the beginning and go through and make sure. Okay. Um. Sam tools is 0 0.1.18, bow tie 2 is 2.1.0, uh -huh. or whichever one you have. Which one do you have? Bow tie 2, uh -huh. 2.1.0. Okay, and then top hat? 2.0.8? Yeah. Okay. That's fine. Mm. Okay. All right. I was having trouble loading the module load BCF tools. BCF tools, will, you'll not be able to load. Oh, you're not supposed to do that command there? No, well, you're supposed to, but most of you will not have that. For some reason, it's not in your module repository. Okay. So, so I was able to run the command one before it, and it said one sample and one input file. Right. You will get this output. Okay. Yeah. 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 Right. Is that the output you get? 
Yeah. Okay, good. So then the next step is to module load BCF2. Now this part only works for me. <laughs> uh, but the reason being that BCF tools is not available to you, but if you ask those guys uh, uh, in the HPC, send an email to HPC support and tell them that you you know you don't have access to BCF tools, they'll give you access and then you'll be able to load it. Okay, great. Right? It's just that this is not a very commonly used program. So maybe that's why you know you don't have it wasn't installed for all users, um, and I'm part of the group that has access to it. But you know if you need it, feel free to tell them. Okay, the next step is this step, which is we make a call for this. So minus c directs BCF tools to call snips. Okay, so let's see. Let's just go BCF tools. Okay. So BCF tools uh, for calling variants and manipulating BCF, VCFs and BCFs. This is the BCF tools command argument. Uh, minus minus indexing is to index the BCF files, which we're not doing or right now. Excuse me. We can use it to annotate, concatenate, convert VCF to different formats, and a lot of other things. But this is what we're interested in. Right now we're calling snips. Okay? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. What's... So on the top is the number of the reads, and what are the, the rows? Is that the uh, um, The rows are the reads. And what's on top? That's the reference sequence. Oh, that's the position. Just, that's just the position. Oh. Yeah. yeah. The position and the reference sequence. And so, like... You know, here uh, this is position is 50, has an A in the reference, but it has a C here. It's probably most likely a sequencing error because everything else has a A. Is it sorted? I mean, it's sorted. Yeah, they're all sorted. Is it sorted? By your, the reads are sorted by the position. Remember when we sorted? Oh, we I see, because that's the word. Yeah, and that's what the C, the black line here, the gap, that's where your read ends. Would it be useful to sort it according to the read number? Read number yeah, or read name? Read. There are two ways to sort. One is by the read name or the read ID. Uh -huh. And then the second is by the position. Uh -huh. What is the, what's the read name? Like basically the ID. But I mean, I'm, I'm thinking that over time the, each read gets progressively worse than the previous one, right? No, not each read. So what... Yeah. Confused. I'm sorry. Huh? I'm getting them confused. Okay, so this is one read, yes. right? Sequence quality might drop here at the end of the read, but that does not mean that the next read will be any worse or better than the previous one. It just means that the next read has the same probability that these positions in that read may not be sequenced to that quality as these ones in the same read. So it's almost like that's almost like time on the, the axis. Yeah, so basically, if you see here, this position in this read, right? This position number 34 or something, is of a better quality than this position in this read. Yeah, yeah, I see that, yes. Even though this read comes after this read, the first read. So this is probably a very basic question regarding like how the sequencers work. Then what is the actual read? Is it just the image, like part portions of the image, or? Yeah, read is just a portion of this uh, actual transcript. A read is a portion of the transcript. Basically, if you think of the analogy of having a dictionary that was you know amplified. <coughs> and shred it, mm -hmm. then your read is just anything from that shred paper. So it's almost like a cluster on, on, the, on the chip? Yeah. Would be considered... Yeah. I can look into that. I'm curious too. I feel like I've seen some YouTube videos that like showed aluminum sequencing. I've I watched those videos. That's know? why I'm asking this question. <laughs> well, I mean, they, they, yes. I mean, the, that's what they make. The, the clusters are where they make the base calls for each position, mm -hmm. right? That's where they're making the call, or they're like, or they're going down and trying to figure out what. The but those clusters are changing over time with the chemistry, right? Meaning, 
No, the clusters will stay the same. No, because they're all, they're bridging and then they're just they're... amplifying. The bridging is just amplifying that. But position. then they keep washing it away, don't mm -hmm. they? they? They have these wash cycles and bridging and the washing is, right? Yeah, the yeah, like it does a fluorescence. It takes a picture, codes it as ET, G or C, uh -huh. washes away, amplifies, takes another picture. Right, right. Does that answer your question? Yeah, or? yeah. So, but then within that picture, there's lots of different regions of clusters. Yeah, right? yeah. There's like across the whole lawn right, of right. the sequencing, you're getting you know thousands of uh, colors simultaneously, and those are like. All and the so they basically reads. broken up this image into like multiple portions, I'm assuming, and then they read different clusters, or they identify regions of clusters, and they watch it over time. I think that's fair. Yeah. Or, do you agree, Michelle? Yeah, that's fair. Um, well, let's you know, let's call an expert. Let's stand Moe's here. <laughs> well, let's ask him, because this is something that is you know obviously it's not a very clear thing. Yeah, I just always like to know where the data is coming from, and so I have a better no, no, understanding that's true. of what's real and no, what's... No, me too. That, that makes perfect sense. So, in right. this, as we're going forward, we can see that, you know, there are lots of uh, matches, okay. mismatches. I think 475 is that position where I'm, where I'm sure there is a... where we had inserted a uh, SNP. Mm -hmm. That should be coming up. Right. Here we go. There's a 490, 480. What? What? Is it just less or more? Or 700, I think that this was 700. Right here. Is it just less or more or something? No, no, it's, I think it's 780 or something. Or is this some other viewer you're using? How are you looking at it? Oh, it's the BCF tools, BCF right? Tools. Yeah, BCF, just, I'm just doing Sam Tools T view. This one. Whoa. So, so this position right here is where we have a SNP that we have introduced, right? Nice. Yeah. Because this is a T, and pretty much the consensus call is a G. And all the other kind of noise there is just noise. Well, there's some C calls here as well, like this is a C. Well, like the other stuff, like on the left and right, that's just noise? No, that's just other reads. G? But like oh, yeah, an error, yeah, that might be an error. error. That's an error. That might yeah. be an error, yeah. 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 Okay. It could be a read error or a chemistry yeah, error, it's right? a, okay. Yeah, that's okay. right, you're right. Some, some okay. yeah. But this is where the SNP was, and that's what we need to call. But this is the T view command that helps you visualize your, you know, actual sequence and based on how, where there is an error versus where there is an actual call. What does like 10x coverage mean or depth? Does that At every well, actually, it literally translates to there is a coverage of 10, 10 reads are covering that base pair for all bases. Got it. At least 10 reads. So here we have like more than 10. Reads. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. That's it. I think that was pretty much it. And the rest of it is just terminology that you want to go through. I just wanted to show you that. Then you can visualize this. And that's that. If you wanted to go and open this variance of VCF, I think you can do that. There's a and this is just information of what the VCF format is like, what you can see. You know. All right. Okay. Good. And that was our goal for the homework for this week is to get to that point. Well, yeah. Okay. I mean, read through it and then you know come back and tell me stuff that I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's also important, right? Part of this is also like I need to learn something too. Okay. So like, your homework is to find out about how this module uh, pair pair reads. Yeah. Right. Like, yeah. Your homework is to find out the chemistry of. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> how the sequencer works? <laughs> yeah, how the sequencer chemistry works. Yeah. You know? So that I would be cool. I just want to know, like, like the image process, because you're calling going across to read, and you're also calling going down, like, a read that's the read yeah. depth. Yeah, totally. No, that's that's a legit thing. I mean, um, you know, yeah, dig deep and try to tell us every time, uh, tell all of us next time you find out about this. We can ask Mo as well. I think he'll know much better yeah, okay. how the actual chemistry works. Like, I think those YouTube videos, I always get confused with They're those. They're confusing. They're very confusing, right? different colors flashing at yeah, you. Yeah, like, okay, how did you I think part of it, they do it on purpose, so they don't want to give away the proprietary. Yeah, yeah. maybe they just want to make it look processing cool. one yeah. is probably very straightforward. And they identify the, the regions that have a signal greater, yeah. like a region greater than a certain amount, yeah. and they count those ones. Exactly. So I, I don't know uh, my, uh, in terms of, you know, where exactly um, that that sequence is. For me, it's just basically, okay, the sequence is this, mm -hmm. you know? 
Um, yes, there's a lot of those. Initially, they were, there was a probability, like solid had this another method. So you know, by the time you learned solid, something else.